This is part 118 of ASP.NET Core tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to set password reset token lifespan. That is, how long the token will be valid. This is continuation to our previous video part 117. So please watch part 117 before proceeding. Both token types, that is password reset token and email confirmation token are generated by the built-in data protector token provider class. In our previous video, we discussed in detail how this class generates and validates these tokens. So it is the data protector token provider class that generates and validates tokens and the lifespan of these tokens is controlled by another class and that is data protection token provider options class. We can see this ourselves by inspecting the source code of data protector token provider class. At the moment, we are looking at the source code of data protector token provider class. Notice this class has got a constructor and this constructor receives a parameter of type I options of data protection token provider options. And remember, this is the class that controls the lifespan of the tokens generated by data protector token provider class. And if we look for this type in this class, we have several occurrences. And if we scroll down a bit, we have a property here called options. And again, the type of this property is that same class that controls the token lifespan, data protection, token provider options. And if we scroll down all the way to validate async method, notice the token lifespan is read from the options property. And we have just seen the options property data type is data protection token provider options and this property is initialized within the constructor right here. It is initialized with this incoming parameter value. So this incoming parameter will have a value only if we have explicitly set the token lifespan. Otherwise, a new instance of this data protection token provider options class is created. With a brand new instance, the default token lifespan is one day. We can see this if we inspect the source code of data protection token provider options class. Notice this class has got a property called token lifespan. The data type is time span and the default value is one day. All the tokens that are generated by this data protector token provider class have a default lifespan of one day. From security standpoint, password reset token is a bit sensitive. So it makes sense to reduce the time it is valid for. Let's say, for example, we want to set the password reset token lifespan to five hours. We do that in configure services method of the startup class. On this incoming parameter services, which is of type I service collection, we have configure method. If we bring up IntelliSense by pressing control space, we see this method has got a generic parameter. And remember, it is this data protection token provider options class that controls the token lifespan. So as the generic argument, we're going to specify data protection token provider options class. Next, we want to override the default token lifespan of one day. I'm going to call the parameter O for options and we want to set the token lifespan option. So O dot token lifespan. And remember the data type of this property is time span. So let's use time span and we want to set the expiry in hours. So let's use from hours and pass a value of five. This code not only sets password reset token lifespan to five hours, it also sets the lifespan of all the token types generated by data protector token provider class to five hours. This may not be the behavior you want. For example, the email confirmation token is also generated by data protector token provider class. So this means even the email confirmation token lifespan now is five hours. In general, email confirmation tokens can live a little longer than password reset tokens. For example, let's say we want to change the lifespan of email confirmation token to three days. So in short, we want to be able to change the token lifespan of just one type of token. To do this, we have to create a custom data protector token provider and data protection token provider options. We'll discuss how to do this in our next video. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening.